this head belonged to my co-pilot robot. He was the most loyal companion in the galaxy. Dick. Malfunction. Dick. Malfunction. These Gravorians will pay dearly for this, my friend. Now, what's a space adventure film without a trusty robot sidekick, huh? Am I right? In the original draft, we had Dick and Scarlet team up with an alien from the planet's surface. You know the type, pointy ears, wise and emotionless. Uh, but then we came to our senses and realized that a giant tin can robot's way cooler. <laughs> Besides, everybody was doing the alien thing back then. You know me, I'd rather be a trailblazer. The insurance company made us install those safety guards after our actors fell off the set one too many times. Granted, they kept falling off even with the rails, but thanks to how the contract was laid out, we were no longer liable for their injuries. Ladies and gentlemen, I guess it's time to talk about the elephant in the room. Why on earth does this crazy film have title cards on screen when people are talking? You're thinking that, aren't you? I know you are. I would be too.
part about being in showbiz. Craft services. It's like never-ending supply of free food all day long. I never had to pay for a single meal. Hey, Patrick, I noticed you guys don't do that here in your studio. You should talk to your boss. Maybe even just a bagel station. Picking science community also complained about these Terra whatevers breathing fire. Like there's fossil evidence of dinosaurs not ever shooting fireballs. It's not like I gave them neck frills or had them spit poison or anything ridiculous like that. Luck would have it, the next lot to ours was filming some horror movie set in Transylvania. So we signed a soft contract with them to use their set after they wrapped for the day. And by that, I mean we kind of snuck in and filmed it real quick when no one was looking. <laughs> I had my assistant Phyllis keep a lookout for the security guard. <laughs> Oh! 
days, the effects team really nailed it. Dinosaurs, saucers, hey, you name it. But these, um, deflating rock boulder cubes, ah, not their best work. Just looks kind of odd, if you ask me, like giant whoopee cushions. And they said they could add some debris and explosions or two afterwards. And then we ran out of budget. Well, to be fair, we ran out of budget several times, but still, I lost a lot of sleep over these rocks. get our hero to really start wailing on those monsters. We were unsure how to represent a surge of adrenaline at first, but I think we nailed it. Yep, definitely nailed it. this one with regular logs. Well, that was disastrous. I'll tell you, never mess with physics. It was kind of, well, to be frank, it started out nice, but then, er, uh, well, it was a death trap. Just plain and simple, it was a death trap. Poor kid holding the boom almost broke his leg. I guess he played basketball in college or something, because he leaped right at the last second. Whoo! Crisis averted. My props guy wanted to swap them with some spongy material for safety, but I had a better idea. Let's set the logs on fire, then the crew will be sure to be safe dealing with them. Though we created these conveyor belts for Stacy's character, Jonathan was always trying to run across them to no avail. I probably should have told him that we slowed the belt down whenever Scarlet runs across, but he, I got a real kick out of watching him try. I was thinking, 
with all this jumping and climbing and jumping, wouldn't this make a great video game? Isn't that what all those video games are about? Jumping around? Well, yeah, and killing. There's jumping too, but mostly killing. What? Patrick, that's awful. What sort of example are we setting for our use? Well, movies are pretty violent too. Your heroes have killed everything in sight. You had Dick shooting a dinosaur in the face in the first five minutes. Oh, uh, well, Patrick, it's different, you know? What we did on film, that was art. Video games aren't art. Thank you.